we must criticize, we'll just criticize to build and not to destroy. That is why we say we are in the service of God and country. This is the blog post, a.k.a. Kuku Shodemo. And from the news reel, we endeavor to keep it real. Remember to keep it real. I remember to share this broadcast. We are streaming live on Facebook. My brother, my sister, this is in the service of God and country. Now, the very first thing I want to look at today is coming from 3 News. My own 3news.com, the most authentic source of news online. And he says, Akuno refused sports minister's claim of receiving $100,000. And I read Former Black Stars coach Charles Kwabla Akuno has refuted claims made by sports minister Mustafa Youssef that he was given $100,000 after being dismissed. Akuno parted ways with the Black Stars in September 2021 following a run of unimpressive results from matches that put Ghana's World Cup qualification chances in danger. He was replaced with Serbian tactician Milovan Rajavak, who made his return to the team after a remarkable stint which saw Ghana reach the quarterfinals of the 2010 World Cup, which was held in South Africa. After two years of Akuno's departure, there were claims that the combined arrears of seven months were yet to be paid to the former Asante Kotoko coach, which the sports minister had admitted last week. The minister, however, stated that 1 Hundred thousand American dollars was paid to both C.K. Akuno and Reja uh, which was followed with a promise of paying their arrears. Both C.K. and Milovan, once their contracts were terminated, we sat with them and negotiated their exit, and C.K. was paid one hundred thousand dollars immediately after the negotiation. Same as Milovan, we still owe both of them. And we have a payment schedule, which I admit we have not followed because of constraint of funds. As and when we get funds, we will pay the two coaches, Yusuf stated at a press briefing last week. Now, contrary to the alleged amount paid, Aquino says he never received the said amount, adding that his agreement with the Football Association was not followed. I never received the kind of money the minister mentioned. I don't want to put out how much they paid me, but it was not 100,000 American dollars, as the minister said. I could not told Graphic Sports. My contract is still with the FA, and if he likes, he can go and check the agreement we had and see before making the claim, and he will know what, that he is wrong. You see, in this country, we treat foreigners better than we treat our own indigents. In this country, in fact, we have a certain complex that I dare call inferiority complex, shrouded in hospitality, the so-called Ghanaian hospitality. And that makes almost every foreigner who comes here look down on us. People come from accursed countries. And all of a sudden, the moment their feet touch the soil in this country, they wear robes of superiority. And they look down on our people. And it is all because, you see, Abuabe Kawa, nephew Untumam, our own people are those who spearhead this inferiority complex in our people and superiority complex in foreigners. Look at the number of African Americans who have repatriated. Number of Jamaican people who have repatriated. Number of people from the Caribbean who have repatriated. They all come into the country with one mind and one aim. We are coming to revisit and to join us with the spirit of our ancestors 
and through brotherliness and sisterliness, we will be able to move the continent further. But the moment they reach this country, they catch the bug of superiority complex. They start looking down on the indigents, especially those of them who come from countries whose accents we don't have here. My brother, my sister, at the end of the day, it is the nation that suffers. At the end of the day, our people are still enslaved. At the end of the day, the chains are only taken from out of our hands and legs and put on our brains and minds. I don't know how many people are listening to me. You could be hearing me from wherever you are, but are you listening to me? I want to implore you to raise your children in Pan-Africanism and in self-pride. It is so unbecoming of our people. Anything that has a foreign accent, we bow before. Foreigners come into this country. They do businesses. And they compete with their Ghanaian counterparts. And our own Ghanaian people run after the foreigners. And patronize their goods and businesses. Living outside our own Ghanaians. Not because they necessarily provide anything better but because of that inferiority complex, the disease that can never be cured by any doctor. The greatest thing that ever happened to the African is Pan-Africanism. For you to be able to know your rights and also to know your history so that when you are walking, you walk deep. When you are talking, you talk deep. It hurts me, my brother, that C.K. Akono, who led this country to such beautiful feats. It is normal to hire and fire coaches all over the world. Some of the best coaches have ever been fired. Whilst you are firing, somebody is hiring the same fired coach. But when we fire them, we must show them respect. I remember when Milovan came into this country. The so-called Milovan Rejavak came to this country we supported him so much we pushed him forward he took us to the world cup in 2010 as was mentioned in that write-up and when we scored against his country what did he not do to us he refused to jubilate he was showing his patriotism to his country my brother he refused to jubilate so I asked myself, if his country had won against the Black Stars, you can imagine what he would have done. My brother, he was showing his country patriotism. What lesson that this teaches us? We should grow our own patriotic coaches. We must grow our own patriotic people. We must never compromise patriotism. Never. This dual citizenship, triple citizenship must all be thrown away without apology. Somebody asked me the other day, are you saying I'm unpatriotic because I have dual citizenship? Yes, you are. What are you talking about? Do you know what it means to say dual citizenship? It means that you are sharing your birthright, my brother, my sister, between two countries. Can you tell me that you are patriotic? To which country? Please let us be wise and be smart and stop these rhetorics. They do not make sense, my brother. That was the question somebody asked me. Are you saying that I am unpatriotic because I have a dual citizenship? Yes, 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 yes. To the umpteenth time, you are unpatriotic. You are sharing your birthright, my brother. What is the reason you are a citizen of another country? Why? Can you give reasons? Can you make your country reach that level so that you don't need that other citizenship? That is what we are preaching. And that is what we are telling the people. 
It might not sink right now, but time to come, our people would embrace this in total patriotism. I've just given you an example. Milovan Rejavak. Our country played against his country. I think that was Croatia. My brother, my, my sister, when Ghana scored against Croatia and won the game, and the Ghanaian players were so much excited and jubilating, coming to carry the coach, he boxed them away and stood against that because he was still patriotic to his country no matter what. Only God knows how many gallon fools of uh, tears he shed that day in the dressing room when Ghana won against Croatia. After he left us so disrespectfully, disregarded us as a people, left us in the middle of the ocean with so much disrespect, we were told that he didn't even sign off. He walked out. Years later, we went for a dead Croatian horse. When we brought him back, we sacked Charles Akuno, who had played for the Black Stars, paid his dues. My brother, my sister, we never gave him time to be able to warm up properly and move the Black Stars forward. We brought a dead horse, and he came and killed the Black Stars even further. You know when a man is dead, and you are still killing the man deeper, you want to kill the soul of the man. That was what Milovan did to Ghana. Yet, the minister is boasting that they paid him off. They only owe him a few months of uh, arrears. And Charles Akuno is saying, the money that they said they paid me is a lie. My brother, how many times have local coaches, our own home breed coaches, complained? When it comes to their foreign counterparts, they are not a match in terms of remuneration. How much do they pay them? Inferiority complex. When you go to a university in Ghana, the guy coming from Harvard, though Ghanaian, puts up S and feels that he's better than you. After all, the education that is given to you in Ghana was given to you by the white man. My brother, my sister, when are we going to run away from this kind of mentality? This is my area. If you give me the chance, I will speak and speak and speak till the end of time. But I have other things to discuss. So I'm going to leave it here. Shame on you, Ministry of Sports. Shame, 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 shame. This minister, you are a big shame. Minister Yusuf, tell me, do you have any arrears in terms of salary with the Ministry of Sports? No. As for the ministers, they are never in arrears when it comes to their salaries. They take everything. Politicians have never had their salaries in arrears. If anything at all, they rather take double salaries. As we witnessed a few months back, some ministers were paid double and triple salaries. I don't know if they have refunded those monies. Can you believe this? You are minister, you're taking full salary. Your salary has never been in arrears. Yet the man whose job it is to lead the Black Stars is still sitting home. His money has not been paid. Oh, Jesus have mercy. <laughs> My brother, my sister, another thing I quickly want to look at, and I needed to come along. And let's deal with this very, very uh, quickly. Mm -mm -mm -mm. There are so many things happening, my brother. And we all have to be very, very, very careful. This is our nation. And if we don't support this nation to grow, I wonder what we're going to be telling the next generation. Well, I re I'm reading this from Ghana Web, and it says, Kitchen scandal. Gabi, neck deep in 187 million Ghana City deal. Ablakwa drops explosive details. And I read, Gabi Asai Rochida, lawyer and cousin of President Nana Adodankwa Akufu Ado, is the latest personality to come under the parliamentary oversight radar of North Tongue Member of Parliament Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa. The lawmaker on August 1, 2023, posted a series of documents to back his latest publication, Dubbed Kitchen Scandal. He accuses 
um, Akufu Ado's inner circle, inner circle, especially Gabi, of engaging in a deal that is likely to cost the country huge sums of money. He disclosed that the scandal in question was valued at 187 million plus Ghana cities. The kitchen scandal is a tale of betrayal, bravado, double standards, influence peddling, dishonesty, greed, collusion, and twisting naked nepotism and blatant rape of the public purse. The kitchen scandal will afford us a rare insight into how President Akufuado's kitchen cabinet operates and how destructive they have been to national progress. According to Ablakwa, Oshida Akum managed to get sections of government, including the Attorney General and elements within the Finance Ministry, to agree to pay his new client the said amount, even though there is no basis for so to be done. It is absolutely insane for Akufu Ado's keep kitchen cabinet to create this uh, an almost 187.3 million Ghana cities liability for the Ghanaian taxpayer under the downgraded bankrupt IMF bailout economy. Well, I have told you already, when people have dual citizenships, they are not under any obligation. And they have demonstrated it adequately that they are not under any obligation to give us 100% loyalty. My brother, my sister, this is a man who is a British citizen. He was born in Chelsea. He claims he's not a politician. Yes, he's worse than a politician. If this man allegedly was able to move a finance minister, I beg your pardon, to move an energy minister so that his whims and caprices and his ego, in fact, could be massaged and pampered and garnished, then you should know what kind of man he is. In fact, Nana Akufuado. He's a very disgraceful president. And I will say this without apology time and again. I don't like this man one bit. And I'm glad I have not hidden it from Ghanaians. I used to love him. I used to appreciate him right from the start when he was talking all the big histories. But with time, I realized that he was a common jack, a headless jack with not a scintilla of patriotism for our country. My brother, I have not gone into this allegation, but I am not surprised, and I will not be surprised if a man can renegotiate the Ameri deal and be able to get the energy minister outside and throw him out. If a man wins so much power because he is the cousin of the president, then what difference does it make if we had a kingship? If we were ruled by a king so that we call ourselves the royal empire of Ghana, ruled by these guys in power, so corrupt and so dirty. Oh, my brother, my sister, what a nation. Oh, what a nation. Oh, my dear Ghana, what a shame. My brother, in the name of procurement, these dirty urchins and scavengers, my brother, my sister, make sure that the nation is downtrodden. They have no respect for the hardworking Ghanaian. There is nothing like hard work in their dictionaries. All they care about, my brother, my sister, political shenanigans and gymnastics, underpinning every little thing that they do. They don't care the source of the money. All they care about is that they have the money. Only in the regime of Nana Kufuadu, we see ministers holding millions of American dollars in hard cash. And other former ministers and MPs who say, oh, she didn't play her cards well. She shouldn't have gone to the police. Ha! 
and you live in this country. Now the guy who was said to have designed the cathedral, today the British people themselves have thrown him under the bus because of some kind of sexual harassment. Where is Sir David J? Is he still called Sir? Or oh, they are going to deny it him as he's been thrown under the bus. My brother, my sister, God is punishing everybody whose hand is in this cathedral. They will either go mad or they will get stroke. They will all be revealed one after the other. Victor Kusi Boatin has been thrown away as a common criminal, a man with two mothers. Even Jesus Christ didn't have two mothers. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. 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 Listen, it's been the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power. Ghana is our land, and that is the only country we have. Nobody is bigger than the truth. Stand by Ghana and make sure that Ghana continues to prosper. Hallelujah. I will return into the African history class. I